Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane and before we get into the video I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's taken the time to watch, comment, and like the videos and a special thanks to those who subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. The channel continues to grow because of people like you. On this channel we cover dividend growth investing portfolio updates like this one here. That's what this video will be about. I did add $1,372 to the portfolio. We'll go over all the activity in the portfolio. We do do some options as well so we'll cover those any dividends paid, what we added to a new capital. I also do a stock pick of the day series, typically Monday through Thursdays. On occasion, I will miss from time to time. I did miss a couple days this week. I had a bit of a work trip up into Marquette, up in the UP here this week to go check out one of our facilities up there. And if you are a dividend growth investor and you have not done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors so we can share our experiences, stocks we're buying, stocks we're avoiding, just overall tips and tricks that we have learned along the way. We cannot benefit from each other's investing, but we can benefit from each other's experiences. And as I said, this is a portfolio update. It is going to be August 20th, Sunday morning, $1,372 and some change added in the portfolio this week in new capital. And let's get started and see what else was done. So first up, on August 14th, we had some options. We did a cash secured put on MPW here. I know MPW is having a lot of issues right now. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about this company as well in this video. There, it is kind of a little bit of a focus here. This uh, Obviously, we, we did the put cash secured put, $8 strike price, and started that on 8-14th, which was Monday. We were assigned those shares, so we picked up 100 shares of MPW, Medical Properties Trust. This is a REIT out of the real estate sector. We were assigned those shares at $8. It is actually below that. I think it is slightly below $7, $6.90 something and some change there. Uh, but we picked these up at 8 My cost basis is in the nines, so I'm comfortable anything below 8 or $8 right now. Now, again, this company does have some issues right now. They have some issues with some tenants. There was some negative news that came out here. Actually, there's been negative news quite a while uh, with the issues with their tenants. But then there was something about them not being able to go through. They had made a deal with one of the tenants where they would acquire a ownership stake in the company, and then they would be able to sell the, those stakes uh, of the company later on to help recoup some of the lost uh, revenue from rents. It's my understanding that uh, California will no longer let them or is trying to block that. They think that will still go through, but that is yet to be seen. So that was part of the additional negative news on Friday. And to be completely honest, it's not something that they had in their recently report out. So I am a little disappointed because it seems like they tried to hide that from us as investors. But again, at these prices, I believe the issues are priced in. There is the potential for a dividend cut, so you will see what I am doing about the dividend cut. I've basically, I'll show you that here in a little bit, I've basically already said they're going to cut this dividend in half. But again, I feel at these prices that a lot of that bad news and bad information is, is priced in. I have this around a $10, $11 stock, so I am comfortable at the, at the current prices or lower, even if they cut the dividend. And as I said, we'll see that here in a little bit. But this cash secured put, we received $33.45 for doing this here. So August 14th, we also had some dividends roll in. First dividends of the week, we Enterprise Product Partner, ticker EPD, paid us $96.28. And Enterprise Product Partners is out of the energy sector. And that $96.28, we do have the drip set on. So that went right back in and picked up 3.58865 more shares of Enterprise Product Partners. So even if I don't continue to add to this position here anymore, I'm going to get every four times a year, 3.5 or a little more next time, a little more the time after that. But three, six, nine, 12, over 12 shares a year of Enterprise Product Partners. So right now, that, that snowball is producing little baby snowballs every quarter and giving us a little bit more to, to tack on. And that 3.58865 shares adds an additional $7.17 in passive income over the next year. So we also got dividends on the 15th, uh, the 13th, that should be the 15th. On August 15th, we received $262.97 total in dividends, and those came from Procter & Gamble, ticker PG, 
that paid us $21.10 and Procter & Gamble is out of the consumer staple sector. And we again, we have the drip set on. So anytime a company pays out, it automatically goes back in and buys more shares of that company. So that $21.10 amounted to 0.13553 additional shares. So some fractional shares there, not quite a full share yet. Ally Financial, ticker A-L-L-Y, paid us $63.82. And those that $63.82 picked up 2.30167 more shares of Ally. We were also paid out by Omega Healthcare Investors, ticker OHI. This is another REIT out of the real estate sector that similar to uh, MPW there, they do REITs in the real estate or in the uh, healthcare sector. And they paid us $178.05, and that picked up 5.68555 more shares of OHI here. All told, this $262.97 added an additional $18.49 in passive income over the next year. Now we are finally to the first new capital that we added to the portfolio. It was also on August 14th. We added $572.54. We picked up eight shares of NextEra Energy, ticker NEE. This is out of the utility sector. This is one we've been building out. And as we've been building out, it has been dropping. It's even further down than this I you know you can't really time the market but I wish I'd have bought this on Friday instead of on Monday because uh, it's down in the $67 range but we picked up those eight shares at $68.48 we also added to our valet position two shares of VALE this is uh, out of the material sector we picked up those shares at $12.48 and all told this all total this uh $572.54 added an additional $16.34 shares from these eight, eight shares of NEE and two shares of VAL, so 10 additional shares there. And last but not least, the last little bit of activity in the portfolio is that Medical Properties Trust, MPW, where we were assigned those 100 shares, so we're going to include that as well. So we, we were paid a little over $30 for writing this book, this put, cash secured put, but then it did cost us $800 in new capital to pick up these 100 shares. Now, here is, I, again, I, I said MPW is going to be kind of a focus of this video, uh, partly because we picked up additional 100 shares, but also some of the changes I'm making to my portfolio. So as you can see here, it shows passive income added, the actual, and the passive income I'm going to count towards the portfolio. So all total right now, MPW has not cut its dividend but I am going to treat it in my portfolio as if it already has cut its dividend. So I've cut the dividend basically in half. So even though I am actually going to receive $116 in passive income added from these 100 shares over the next year, I am only going to count $60, right? That's where it would be. It's going to be 15 cents instead of the 29 cents that it actually is. That's how I'm going to look at this position right now in my portfolio. So if I have already built that cut now, if it's cut any more than that, I basically put it where I am comfortable with them cutting it. If they were to cut it any more than that, any more than in half, I would probably look to exit this position. It would no longer be worth it on the because part of the reason I bought it is it is a higher dividend yield. So to juice the yield a little bit in my portfolio. But I have other positions that are in the 7-8% range. And if anything, I would just add to my Omega Healthcare Investors, which is in the 8 to 9% range and keep that one and, and sell out of MPW, maybe even roll the funds from MPW into OHI. But for now, I'm going to treat it as if it's been cut in half. So it added an additional $60, at least what I'm counting towards my portfolio. Total invested $1,372.54. Total passive income added $102. Total, again, if I'd, counted, if I'd counted the actual 116, this would have been closer to 200 this week. But I'm going to treat it as if MPW has already cut its dividend so not a huge deal to me if they do. Now a quick run through the portfolio sector weights. Communications sitting at 8.35% of the portfolio. Consumer discretionary is this little sliver here, 0.17%. That's just those two shares of Williams and Sonoma I picked up while I was running the wheel on that one. I uh, really wish I'd have held them down in the uh, $110 range. They've really run up, I think, even now with a lot of stocks pulling back there in the 130 range. I'd like them to dip, dip back into the 20, uh, 120 range so I can add some more to that position. Consumer staples sitting at 5.45% of the portfolio. Energy sitting at 6.43%. Financials makes up 
percent of the pie here. Healthcare at 18.54, industrials 8.51, technology sitting at 8.77, materials 14.61, so healthcare is the largest, materials is second. Utilities, that's that next era energy position, 5.84% of the portfolio. And even next era energy, I do actually own 240 shares, but you'll see I'm only counting 140 shares of that because I am looking to uh, sell those 100 shares, but I'm just going to keep on writing uh, uh, covered calls at this point, sell covered calls on it. Uh, no, no one picked up on any of the covered calls this week on next era energy. I think it was because it was uh, dropping down, even though. Uh, I wrote them at like the $70 range. And I don't think anyone was interested since it dropped back into the 67 range. But we'll try it again next week. And second biggest piece of the pie here is REITs and real estate at 12.8% of the portfolio. No ETFs. I have some ETFs in my daughter's account, but this is my e own ETF. I'm building my own ETF here. Now, this over here, portfolio sector weights, is just a little different way to look at it. Here's the percentages. Here's the dollar amount allocated to each position. So you can pause this and go through that if you'd like. Now here it is, the full re reveal of the portfolio. I do this every week, exactly what I'm holding. Here's the ticker over here, how many shares I hold, the current price as of the close of business on Friday. So whatever the market was on Friday, it will be reflected here. The market value, which is just the total shares times the, to the current price. My average share cost, which is just the total shares times my average cost equals my purchase price here. So here's my cost basis. Here's my purchase price. That's how much I actually have into it. Whether I'm up or down, you'll see here in this column, red obviously means I'm in the negative. What percent I'm up or down here in this column, what sector they fall in, quarterly, monthly, or semi-annual payer, current dividend yield again as of the close of business on Friday, my yield on cost. So on the previous slide, we saw the overall sector weightings. This is by each position right here, estimated annual income, what months they pay out, the dividend growth year over year and where they sit 15% of their 52 week low. So if I was looking to add a position, let's look at CVS, for example, and these, this CVS has fallen back down. So I'm looking to add some here next week to CVS again, now that they're below my cost basis. It's at 66.64. So not, not only is it below my cost basis, but I could buy this up to 76.29. So that's kind of what that basically that 15% of 52 week low. This tells me where I want to stop buying a position. Owens Corning, for example, is above my 52 week, yep, it's above 50, 15% of its 52 week low at $83.91. So I would not add to Owens Corning. I hope it pulls back again to that point, but right now I would not be willing to add to that. A lot of the other positions, you can go through that and kind of look at that, but that's what that's about. Total shares, 4,727.97 shares. Market value currently $162,513.60. Big drop this week in the market overall. My purchase price, what I have into it, $166,239.80. I am down $3,726.21. Oh, the difference a week makes. I was actually up last week. Now I am down 2.24%. Current yield, 4.679%. Yield on cost, 4.575. And you'll notice this dropped way back. Let's talk about that for a minute. MPW, as I mentioned right here, I have 690 shares. That includes the 100 shares that I was just assigned. Now, I am showing they only pay 15% quarterly dividend, but in all actuality, they pay a 29 cent dividend. So I have already cut this down to 15 cents per share. It is currently still 29 cents per share. They have not announced any cut yet, but this is what I am willing to hold this position if they cut the dividend, if they were to cut it any lower than this, I mean, depending on it, you know, if they cut it down to 14 cents, I'm not going to, you know, over a penny, I'm not just going to dump them. But if they were to drop it down to, you know, let's say seven cents, six cents, five cents, something like that, it would no longer be worth holding them. Their current yield is 8.66%. That would make my yield on six, on cost at 6.237%. I would prefer, if that were to happen, to sell them and roll it into OHI right here. And the reason I would do that, not only am I up on this position 7%, but their yield would be the same, 8.81%. My yield on cost is 9.437%. So it's ba it's a very similar company. And if they were to drop it down any lower and continue to have issues, I believe the stock price would probably drop even further. I would try to get out of it. As a matter of fact, I have put a 
uh, sell if it goes anything below like 650 I'd be looking to get out of this but right now I'm going to run some covered calls on this but that would be my plan on MPW if they drop it below 15 cents per share I would probably look to sell out of this position entirely I would roll those funds probably maybe a mix of OHI and, and O but a lot of it would probably go right here into OHI because it's a similar type of company and my cost basis would still be in the eight to nine percent range uh, eight to nine percent yield on cost now, this is what it's really all about for me from week to week. I don't care if I'm in the red. You know, it, it, when I'm in the red, it actually gives me more options, stocks that I can buy below my cost basis, buying more shares at cheaper prices, increasing my yield, increasing my potential future return. These are all long-term positions I plan on holding 10, 15, 20, 30 years, right? So I'm not looking to sell any of these. I'm not looking to lock in any of these losses unless there's something uh, that changes with the company mpw you could argue some things have changed with the company especially if uh, the issue with the california stopping this this deal they've made with the company if that does not end up going through and they're just out that rent well that's going to be a change to the company that's that's definitely going to be a change because that would impact their future income so mpw is definitely one that i am watching to see what's going to happen here but it is one that I'm also looking at the price going. My cost basis is $9.62 now. It's down at $6.93. I can decrease my cost basis on this one, continue to bring that down and write, write some cash secured or some covered calls on this one. So I wrote six covered calls for Monday. We'll see if anyone picks those up. But again, this is what it's all about to me. The income provided by the positions within the portfolio sits at $7,604.66. You will notice this is down and it is down because not because it really is down, but it's because I've already preemptively said that they're going to cut the dividend and they may cut it down as low as 15 cents. That's where I'm comfortable. So that would be my new cost basis if they were to cut it down there. When and if they cut it down, I'll adjust it accordingly. If it was 17 cents or 19 cents or whatever, maybe they don't cut it at all. If they don't cut it within the next couple quarters, I'll jump this back up to 29 cents and we'll increase this back up to where it should be. But right now I'm counting on $7,604.66 in estimated annual income from the portfolio very nice to see that this will continue to grow as i add new funds as the positions did like this week a lot of them paid out dividends so they add more shares and increase this number as well well that is really it appreciate you stopping by let me know what you did in your portfolio i know mpw is a hot topic right now so let me know if you have that one if you're avoiding it i could completely understand with all the negative news on this one and the way it's really dropped off i could understand avoiding it until they get their uh, issues resolved with their tenants but for me i already own it so it is an opportunity to average down a little bit in it and that's what i did this week if you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or uh, suggestions for future topics or like the Stock Pick of the Day series. If you have some stocks, some companies you'd like me to cover, go ahead and drop that down below. Like I said, hit that subscribe button down there. It really does help out a small YouTube channel like me. Hit that notification bell so you're notified anytime we drop any new content. Join the vested interest community, building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors, and really appreciate you stopping by. This is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm almost sharing my opinion in investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk against handle money. should never invest any amount not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria, or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.